So it's already bad enough that Joe Biden is even considering and may still be considering Rahm Emanuel of all people for a spot in his administration. For those of you who don't remember, Rahm Emanuel as mayor of Chicago literally covered up the murder of Laquan McDonald. It's a slap in the face to every single Black Lives Matter activist around the country. It's a slap in the face to all of the black voters who were crucial to Joe Biden's electoral success. And apparently he is on a roll with uh, returning the favor for people who helped him get elected because now he is nominating someone uh, who is uh, genuinely a shitty person. And I am not saying this just because I'm bitter because this individual near a tandem has me blocked on Twitter, but because this individual is not just the centrist. This is a right winger who is openly hawkish, who is hateful of individuals like Bernie Sanders, who Joe Biden should theoretically be embracing if he wants to unify the country. But what's really alarming to me is that Neera Tandon, like Joe Biden, has been a longtime advocate of cutting Social Security and Medicare, which uh, is a very big red flag. So as Walker Bragman of Jacobin reports, President-elect Joe Biden will reportedly nominate a White House budget director who has been one of the country's most prominent critics of U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders and who has previously backed Social Security cuts. Biden, who has repeatedly pushed for Social Security cuts throughout his career, announced his selection of Center for American Progress President Neera Tandon as his choice to run the powerful White House Office of Management and Budget. A longtime aide to Hillary Clinton, Tandon touted her think tank's 2010 proposal to reduce Social Security benefits in 2012 as Biden was pushing for such cuts in the Obama administration. Tandon's Social Security push followed the 2010 midterms during the deficit reduction negotiations between the Obama administration and the new GOP Congress. Republicans drew a hard line, but Obama sought a middle ground. Central to the administration's efforts, which were led by Biden, was a plan called the Chained CPI that would have slowed the rate at which Social Security benefits increase over time, which is a cut. Sanders led the fight in the Senate against the chained CPI, while outside groups were divided over whether to line up behind the president. Some, like the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, vocally opposed the cuts. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, a liberal think tank, found that the chained CPI would cut Social Security retirement benefits by about 2% on average. The organization, nevertheless, said it would support the concept under certain conditions. Tandon Center for American Progress, at the time considered to be the largest liberal think tank in Washington, also supported the idea and was a significant voice in favor of the administration's plan. Now, you don't have to take my word for it or Walker Bragman's word for it. You can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Neera Tandon wanted to cut Social Security. Uh, and I think that there's other, you know, there are progressive governors like O'Malley and Cuomo who've taken a much more balanced approach on, on budgets where they've looked at taxes as well as reforming programs and, and cutting programs. And so I think that's that's the approach the American people are supporting. There's a viewer here who wants you to take us deeper into entitlements mm -hmm. uh, by Twitter. Ms. Tanda, do you know what the president means when he says entitlements are on the table? Any specifics and anything you would endorse? Yeah, I mean, so there are a range of entitlements um, that, you know, I think when we're talking about entitlements, we're talking about Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid, these are programs that um, that uh, people receive support because of the status that they have. So when after 65, you get funding from Social Security and Medicare. Um, actually, it's growing, it's going getting older for Social Security. But uh, and you know the president has 300 billion dollars <coughs> in his budget in cuts in Medicare. Um, that comes on top of cuts in Medicare from um, the Affordable Care Act. So he has put specific cuts in the budget already in Medicare, um, and they had savings in Medicaid in the past. Um, I think the question really is, if we're going to have a deal to address long-term deficit reduction, we need to put both entitlements on the table as well as taxes. It's unfair to ask only middle-class Americans to bear the burden of our deficits. Middle-class Americans actually didn't create the deficits. Um, so I think the challenge is that we should have entitlements on the savings, on, on the entitlements, and uh, the Center for American Progress has, has put forward ideas and proposals to reform the beneficiary structure of Social Security. Some of our progressive allies aren't, so, aren't uh, as excited about that as we are, but we've put those ideas on the table. But we, only th we think that those are legitimate ideas that need to be put part of a proposal where everyone's at the table. We don't let, we don't just ask middle class Americans to sacrifice, we ask all Americans. And especially, you know, I think it's not unreasonable to ask 
the wealthiest Americans to pay simply what they were paying in the Bush year. Now, if you're new here and you're wondering why someone who is a progressive like Joe Biden <laughs> would nominate someone who wants to cut Social Security when Joe Biden has repeatedly stated he doesn't want to do that. Well, let me refresh your memory. Uh, this was an ad that Bernie Sanders ran during the uh, Democratic Party primaries of 2020. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans. Benefit. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Well, we've got some bad news for them. We are not going to cut Social Security. We're going to expand benefits. Now, Bernie, it looks like we will, in fact, be cutting Social Security. So, you know, Biden claimed that Bernie Sanders was a liar. Liberal media, MSNBC, attacked Bernie Sanders, claiming that he lied when Bernie Sanders literally used what Biden said against him. But nonetheless, someone who has long time advocated for cuts to Social Security, which has changed CPI, which is a cut over time to Social Security, to be putting someone like Neera Tandon in his administration, this tells us what Joe Biden's intentions are. He wants to cut Social Security. So in this election, we had the choice between a Democrat who wants to cut Social Security and a Republican who has repeatedly vocalized his intent to cut Social Security after the election. Great. Now, that's just one of many reasons why Neera Tandon is a terrible choice. Additionally, she is a warmonger. She also hosted war criminal Benjamin Netanyahu at the Center for American Progress and then silenced staffers who dared to speak out against him going there. And in a leaked email to Faz Shakir, she said this about Libya, quote, We have a giant deficit. They have a lot of oil, which is basically the same exact thing that Donald Trump has been saying about other countries such as Iraq. And after the Union of Think Progress, which was an outlet owned by the Center for American Progress, Progress, got into a dispute with them and threatened legal action, guess what happened next? The entire outlet was shut down. This is what we'd refer to, folks, as union busting, or perhaps union nuking, because rather than trying to negotiate with the union of Think Progress, under the leadership of Neera Tandon, Cap just shut it down entirely. And in addition to terrible politics, Neera Tandon is just a shitty person, so she literally outed a staffer at Cap who came forward with charges of sexual harassment against another staffer, and she did this in front of everyone, shocking the staffers at the Center for American Progress. And in a report for the New York Times, journalist Kenneth Vogel details how she physically assaulted Faz Shakir. And he was a journalist at the time. He was an editor for Think Progress. And she punched him because he dared to ask Hillary Clinton a question that she thought was a little bit too pushy. And on top of that, she's not only against Medicare for All, a policy that would literally save thousands of lives every single year, she has repeatedly lied about it, saying that it doesn't have majority support. And she said this long after it was overwhelmingly popular. So she's a shitty person. She has terrible politics. She's basically a Republican. Um, but Biden is choosing her. And with this nomination is a declaration of war against the left because that's what this is someone who's openly antagonistic towards the left and is also functionally a republican that tells us that joe biden is not open to appeasing progressives which isn't necessarily too surprising but i hope that folks who had the blinders on for joe biden acknowledge that He's not on your side, he's not your ally, he's your enemy, and he is to be opposed. Now, part of the reason why I think that Neera Tandon hates leftists so much is because she was basically assured a spot in the White House had Hillary Clinton won back in 2016. She wanted that cushy job in the White House. And I think that she blames Bernie and the left, and for it, she's been lashing out on Twitter, like, constantly, and she's been purging her Twitter feed uh, a lot since she was uh, nominated. But all she had to do was be patient, because she's still getting that cushy job in the White House. Now, what's interesting is that you have Republicans who should take this as a victory, speaking out against Neera Tandon. Meanwhile, leftists, or I should say uh, so-called progressives in Congress, who theoretically should be against someone who is functionally a Republican being nominated to be the director of the OMB, uh, basically 
praising this decision. So the spokesperson for Republican Senator John Cornyn said that there's no chance that she'll be confirmed, meaning that he will be fighting this nomination. But meanwhile, Democrats who should theoretically know better, like Barbara Lee, are supporting this, saying, such a great choice to lead OMB. Neera Tandon will bring the experience and humanity, that's hilarious, urgently needed in this position. Congratulations. <laughs> Sherrod Brown tweeted out, Neera Tandon is smart, experienced, and qualified for the position of OMB director. And Elizabeth Warren quote tweeted Sherrod Brown saying, I agree, to which I responded by saying, snake emoji, snake emoji, snake emoji, snake emoji, snake emoji. So in a surprising turn of events, the left is now in a position to where we are rooting for the Republicans to win on this battle and we're rooting against leftists, or I shouldn't say leftists because I don't think Elizabeth Warren is a leftist, uh, but people who are, like, not as shitty as the other Democrats. Like, Elizabeth Warren is measurably more progressive than someone like Joe Manchin, of course. The bar is really low. But people who, in theory, should be better, who should oppose a neocon who wants to jack the natural resources from other countries, who's against policies like Medicare for All, you would think that there'd be more outrage from... Democrats who aren't as bad as other Democrats, but that's not the case. So we're in this weird predicament where we have to form this unholy alliance with Republicans and hope that they are successful at obstructing the confirmation of Neera Tandon. And it's just, it's it's a sad state of affairs. And it's stupid because Neera Tandon is basically a Republican. She is functionally a Republican. I've said that how many times now? Three times? So Republicans are kind of dumb for not taking this as a win. But I don't know what's more dumb, them fighting someone who supports their deficit hawk agenda, who is pro-austerity, who wants to cut Social Security like they do, or so-called progressives like Barbara Lee and Elizabeth Warren, who is supporting someone who has fought against everything that they supposedly stood for. I mean, Barbara Lee tweets out how much we need Medicare for all, yet she's cheerleading on this shitty choice. I mean, what a joke, what a weird world that we live in. But nonetheless, I don't care who makes this happen, she has to be defeated. And if Republicans do that, great. Beta male.